जय श्री नारायण जय श्री नारायण जय श्री नारायण मास्टर श्रीमद जगत गुरु सुदर्शन आचार्य जी महाराज I pay my obeisances to Lord Sri Ramanuj. I pay my obeisances to the Purva Acharyas. I pay my obeisances to the Twelve Alvars. I pay my obeisances to Mother Lakshmi, and I pay my obeisances to Lord Sri Manara. I welcome all of you here physically at the Sri Narayan Dham in Durban, South Africa. I welcome those. that's watching this discourse locally nationally and internationally and i welcome those that's going to be watching this discourse when it is posted on youtube and the various groups from around the world subsequently we in continuance of our topic on creation and the created and how to live within this creation and i have stated numerously that the first created being is lord brahma and from lord brahma the secondary creation within this universe takes place and the very first mind born sons of lord brahma are the kumaras and the four kumaras represent the guru principle the four kumaras represent the guru principle every prayer starts off with the very first prayer to the guru guru ra brahma guru ra vishnu guru ra deva maheshwar and this consolidates the vedic injunction that the first principle in this universe is the guru principle and the guru principle means that one has to adopt a bona fide spiritual master in order to evolve successfully in this material universe and i have stated numerously that lord ram when he came and incarnated in this material universe he himself adopted this principle and he took on a guru and when lord shri krishna incarnated he also set a an example and precedent by adopting a guru There are 330 million devis and devtas that are cosmic administrators in this universe. They control every aspect of this universe, and they also control every movement in your body. Every movement in your body is controlled by a devi or devta. The bhavi yon. just now because this topic is boring bhavi is feeling sleepy guru 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 okay even there's a devta for yawning when you yawn there's a devta that controls your yawning all right sita was very happy when i said there are 330 million devis and devtas and she started blinking there's a dot devta that controls the blinking there is no action in your body that is not controlled by a devi or devta every action in everyone's body is controlled 
by a baby of Delta. So, the greatest illusion in life is to think that you are in control. You control nothing. You are merely lodged in the body. You control or you program your life. The only reason you get a body is to program your life. You are only the programmer. You are not the controller. The devils and devtas control every aspect of your being and Lord Sriman Narayan drives you through the program that you have created. And we must understand this. Today, whatever your status is in life, you programmed it. The 330 million devils and devtas, <coughs> they control every activity, every activity of your body every activity of your body. When you understand that you are only the programmer and not the doer, only the programmer and you are not the agent or the doer, then life becomes peaceful. Then life becomes peaceful. As long as you believe you are the doer, then life is a misery. Life is a misery. So I want to state, how many of you heard this beautiful bhajan that Shawan and Benita Baby sang, Eka Prem Eke Ganga? How many of you got books? Open, open to that bhajan, everyone, whoever got books. There's a book behind you, Sita. Open to that bhajan. Who found it and on what page? No numbers. Third page from the back. Third page from the back. Found it, Sita. I'm waiting for you to find it because all the 330 million devils and devtas reside in you. You found it. Anyone else with the book? You found it. You found it, Jay Bai. Mm -hmm. How did that song sound? How it sounded? Beautiful? Sita? Everyone else in the hall? Eka Prem Eki Ganga, how it sounded? Mama? Uh, you sounded it with the Nal, but I'm asking how the song sounded. Vocally. Can you see the typing on that song? All of you can see the typing? Jeva, you can see the typing? Well, what would you think of the person that typed the song? Been typing for a long time? Sita? Typing, spelling, Benita Bene? Spaces in between the paragraphs? How many mistakes are there on the typing? Jebai? Yeah. Can you see some mistakes? <coughs> Oh, but it's legible. Legible. Words. Words. How are the words? You could sing to it. Sherwin does not know Hindi. Sherwin who sang the song. He sings quite a few songs here. But if you ask him the meaning of how, what it is, he knows nothing. He knows nothing. But he could... This particular song is on Spotlight today, Jebai. So Shavan, who knows no Hindi, could sing it in a good tune, isn't it? He could stop, he could break, and he could carry on. 
So it means that the typing was correct for him, isn't it? So I just want to give you all a little history because I'm having a lot of problems in the satsang from transcribers. These people who are trans transcribing the discourse, they have become problematic. And this is why I say the very first principle is the Guru principle. And if one do not abide within the parameters of the Guru principle and bicker all the time, there is going to be a problem. There is going to be a problem. Now I was a disciple. I was a disciple and I typed that song seven years ago. Before typing that song, I never sat on a computer. Before typing that song, I never in my life sat on a computer. I went to Sasky College. How many of you heard of Sasky College? Standard 6, 7 and 8, I did typing. A S. DF with the old TikTok typewriter, TikTok typewriter. In six and seven, sorry, eight, nine, and ten, I did S seven. So there was no typing in that. Just two years I did typing. I never the highest I went into computer was play solitaire. How many of you heard of the game solitaire? That's the deepest I could, I could go into typing. So when we went to India and when Guruji gave me this mission, we relinquished all our businesses. And whilst we started this mission, Mataji had to go and work. Mataji now had to go and work. And Mataji had done a computer course. So we started satsang in a classroom in school. In a classroom in a school. And we wanted people to have something to sing. So that morning I told us, Mataji, how are we going to get this thing typed? Because now we are gone so poor that we cannot get somebody to type for us. But we have a computer, we have a printer from when we were in business, we had an office. So we still have these things. But she is gone to work so that we can run satsang. Where are we going to get money to get someone to type? So Mataji said, I'll come back from work. I will come back from work. And I did the typing course, I'll be able to type. And when she went to work, and I sat there and I said, I'm a man. I'm a human being. Mataji is going to work. I have this time on hand. And we have sacrificed our life for the betterment of the lives of other humans, I will type these songs. So whatever you see typed there, I typed that whole book. Is it in capitals? Is it in capitals? The first half of that book I typed I don't know what button I pressed. Everything disappeared. I looked and looked and looked. I couldn't find anything. But I went back. I went back and I started again. I started again. And I made sure this book get 
printed. Because I had no time to bicker and fight with Guruji and tell Guruji, you gave me such a big mission, I don't have books. I could not tell my Guru that I don't have books. I could not tell my Guru that I don't have time. I could not tell my Guru that I cannot get this satsang going. So that, Sarit, you must keep one of this and put it in our museum. When I'm dead and gone, people must learn how to follow a guru diligently and with discipline. You understand? How to really follow a guru, not superficially follow a guru. Follow a guru properly or don't follow that guru or leave that guru. Because in my satsang, I don't want fake people, I want real people, hard-working people, because I am not a fake to my guru, and I don't want fake people to me. If you can't do my job, don't do it, leave me, I will survive. Who sang the song? Venita Veni, who sang the song, I will survive? In the 80s, you didn't hear the song, I Will Survive. J. Bai, who sang that song? No, it's not a part of it. Okay. I allowed many people to leave my satsang, people that were in very, very high positions. They thought that the satsang cannot run without them. I allowed them to leave and I started from scratch again. Because I want true people in my satsang. I want soldiers. I don't want bickering. Now this, this transcribing is gone to bickering. I myself don't know Hindi. Me. I don't know Hindi. I only know Kitchen Me Hindi. All these transcribers that Hindi I know. Lat Mareke, that Hindi I know. I'm talking to these transcribers. Alright? That kind Hindi I know. I don't know any other kind Hindi. Now do you? This song, Eke Prem Eke Ganga, Bete He. I had to listen to it, Venita Bene, a thousand times until I could write it down in English with English alphabet. I had to listen to the song, stop one sentence, listen, and listen and listen and listen until y'all could sing it. How y'all sang it today? How they sang it today, Royce Pai? They sang it very nice because I transcribed it with my heart. I transcribed it with my heart. That's why your heart could feel this song today. We have no copy. One line right. I don't know Hindi. This is a foreign language with English alphabet. Foreign language with English alphabets. But you heard it today. These people can't transcribe an English discourse in English. And they are computer literate. They are computer literate. I am not computer literate. Look at that book I produced. Look at that song I transcribed from Hindi into English, so that it could be sung today. All of you understand? If you are finding problems in doing work for the ashram, then you cannot call yourself being spiritual. 
you cannot if you grudgingly performing any duties in the ashram then you cannot form call yourself spiritual because it works in proportion you grudgingly do for god what you think god will do grudgingly do for you you grudgingly do for god god will grudgingly do for you this type of thing shouldn't come to the guru it is a damn disgrace when disciples cannot perform their duties then these these bickerings should come to the guru these things must be sorted out outside don't you think when it comes to the guru then the guru has to take action the guru has to take action and i don't want anyone to grudgingly do anything for me in this ashram not one person must do anything in this ashram if it is a pain for them if it is a pain for them no one no one must do anything out of the way for this ashram whatever you do must be in your way must be in your way are you understanding jay bhai when you come here every week you must come here with happiness from the morning when you get up you must say i am happy to come to ashram today when you pick up any work for this ashram you must pick it up with happiness you must pick it up with bliss you must pick it up with loyalty you must pick it up with sincerity you must pick it up so that there can be absolute love between you the guru and god so jessica you came a bit late i gave them an example give her that book sita sita leave it sita will get up from a place leave it leave it leave it i want sita to get up and go and give jessica that book show her that song I'm stopping live satsang so people cannot hear they must come in That's why a lot of people don't come to satsang they catch the guru live <laughs> Jessica see that ek prem ek hi ganga I never typed in my life in my entire life I never went deeper in the computer than the game solitaire not that card game and i think there was another game with it what's the next game there were two games together all right but solitaire was my favorite because it was easy i typed that the first half of that book i typed the whole book in your hand sita uh, jessica had been typed by me without learning typing because it was something that i had to do my guru gave me a mission he never tell me i must go and learn typing he never tell me anything and he never even give me this mission in his lifetime two years or one year after he left his body he gave me this mission spiritually this mission was given to my guru through a photograph through a photograph this mission through a photograph and look at how consistent we have been from 2013 go to go to our facebook page and see what we have achieved been given this mission only from a photograph is because i got no time to bicker 
I am also my Guru's disciple. I am also my Guru's disciple. I got no time for bickering. You heard that song, Jessica? I transcribed it. I don't know Hindi. I don't know Hindi. But the Hindi that I know, I said, Hamko Hona so transcribed ke lat mare. Satish Bhai, you know that Hindi? Yes, that's the Hindi I know. I had to listen to that Premaka Ganga how many times you think so that I could convert Hindi into English and also type it of, and all these things I do, I didn't know. I didn't know typing. I didn't know transcribing. That is why I said the reason I was successful because I did it from my heart. I did it from my heart. Jessica, everything in this ashram is done from my heart. Those devotees came this morning where you saw me. Jai Bhai? Outside. Outside. I was still working till this morning, concrete in the yard and supervising the concreting because I'm doing it from my heart. I'm not doing it superficially to please my guru. I'm doing it from my heart. And I want all my disciples to do things from their heart only. I won't be upset if you tell me certain things you cannot do. Don't do things out of your heart and get tired. Do things from within your heart. Take up positions if you can fulfill the the mandate in that position. Don't take up position and get tired. Because once you get tired, then you lose your spirituality. Don't you think? And this is not unique only here in South Africa. When I was with Guruji's disciple, G.S. Bawa, I spent 21 days with him when I got this mission. And he taught me everything that I know today. And Guruji let him live so that he could meet me and teach me how to run this mission. After he taught me this mission, I came back to South Africa. G.S. Bawa passed away. You understand? And he told me, look at Guruji should show him. See that person, see that person, see that person. You think they'll ever leave this ashram, Bawa? And Bawa should say, no, Guruji, look at how hard they're working. And Guruji should say, no, that person got six months left, that person got one and a half years left, that person got three years, they'll be gone. And Bawa lived till about over 85, and he saw as Guruji predicted, as Guruji predicted. So on my side, on my side, I rather have five or ten devotees. I rather have five or ten genuine devotees. Not Acharya Ji, I'll never leave you. Every devotee that came here, Acharya Ji, I'll never leave you. And then all this nonsense. All of you understand? All of you understand the very first principle in creation is the Guru principle. Then if it is the Guru principle, it means it is also the disciple principle because Guru cannot exist without disciple. So Guru and disciple is interdependent, is interdependent. And if that cycle is not fulfilled then we are in total Kali Yuga. We are in total Kali Yuga. We are in total Kali Yuga. So make that change in your heart. 
Roj Bhai. I was happy to see Roj Bhai here yesterday. Satish, Jessica, Rakesh Bhai, Mama. They came and did a few things. All right. But when you all are gone, the Guru is working 24 hours in this ashram. You may come for your one hour, your two hours, your three hours. Guru is working here 24 hours. Who is phoning the Guru and asking him, Guru, how are you managing? Think anyone cares for the Guru? People will be upset after this discourse, isn't it? Those upset people, you think they care for the Guru? Who phones the Guru and asks, Guru, you got bread in your house? Guru is a house, sorry, Ashram. Guru, you're doing such a big project. How are you feeling? Are you tired tonight? That is why I brought me a big bandage for my back. I think Mataji stole it. <laughs> I don't see it anymore, that is what. It got hit. All right. But are you all understanding me? New and old. There's no new and old. Everyone is the same. This is a satsang. Sat means truth. Sang means pious people. And we must come together. We must come together. We must harmonize. We, each of us must put one one brick in this building. And who's the cement? Lord Narayan is the cement. Bring your brick, cement it with Lord Narayan, and you'll never have a problem in your life. So transcribing is very easy according to me, Jessica. Transcribing is very easy because I transcribed a foreign song with in English alphabet, and I also typed it. I'm not computer literate. I am not computer literate. That was the first day that I printed this book <coughs> that I typed. Alright? And no guru power in typing. No guru power in typing. Otherwise I would have sold about 1,000 books by now. Don't you think? From my own discourses. I did over 1,000 discourses. So I would have typed over 1,000 books. No guru power in typing. I did what any one of you are doing, Jessica. I'm talking to the transcribers. Any one of you transcribers who are doing, I did the same thing. Look at how nice I blocked it. See the block there? Do you know how long it took me to find how to block on the other side of the margin? You all know how many hours it took me to block on this other side of the margin. From the margin is normal block. But on that side to block it, Jai a person who has not touched a computer in his life, how long you think it took me to find that? I don't even know how I found it. Rosbad, we were doing the truck engine. Nobody could give us specs. So where do you think the Guru went and found the specs? On the internet. After the Guru found the specs, I had to beg my two sons, please catch this thing because I don't even know how I came here. If I come out, I won't know how to go back. Then Sherwin said, Dad, it's on tab. Only mama know what tab means. <laughs> uh, mama, I don't know what tab means, mama. You understand? Sherwin said it's on tab. 
But I find these things. I, like any normal person, I go because I'm dedicated to what I do. I am dedicated to what I do. Every morning when I get up in my kutir, and this I started from the day I started my first satsang, I ask my guru, Guruji, what more can I do for your mission today? And this is why any time you come to this satsang, I will tell Mataji, please don't get me up. If any devotee come, tell them I am very, very tired. I'm sleeping. I won't be able to make it to see them. Then I put my head on the pillow and I feel guilty. I feel guilty. How could I have said such a thing to Mataji? Because when I took this mission on from Guruji, I didn't put that in the condition. I just took the mission. Guruji gave the mission and I took the mission unconditionally. That is why. So I feel guilty when I sleep there that somebody is going to come. Then I get up through my own guilt go and put hot water on my back. My greatest problem is my back and wait for the devotee to come. And there has never been any devotee who ever came in my kutir that I ushered them all in the satsang without talking to them for two, three, four, five hours. Because I didn't tell my guru when I was accepting this mission that I won't do certain things when I'm tired. All of you understand? All of you understand? Everyone? So Katija, I see some hearing from the grapevine that you're doing the transcribing properly. I'm hearing from the Grapevine. We don't have a huge grapevine. All right, you can work it out. Thank you, Katija. I didn't know that you was so deeply hooked. To. But everyone won't be able to do the transcribing like Katija. Everyone is different. Is it not? Everyone is different. And I told Vishwadar yesterday, that we must have gratitude for people who's assisting in this mission. The minute we lose the word gratitude, gratitude is a word that should describe what satisfy? Graciousness. You must feel good when somebody do something for you. I am the only guru in the world, only guru in the world that asks my disciples, please, can you do this? And after you do it, I say thank you. I am the only guru in the World, please, Jessica, can you help me? Venita Beni, am I right or wrong? You all have been in Guru Institution for over 30, 40 years. Very Bhai, you ever heard a Guru saying thank you very much? Sita? Sita couldn't even see the Guru for 30 years. She was in the ashram for 30 years. The Guru didn't even call Sita and say, Narayan, Devi our Devtas. Maybe he was frightened <laughs> of the 330 million Devis and Devtas on earth. He was afraid to interact with her, Sita. When I went to India, I was telling people, thank you, thank you. They said, Acharya Ji, 
you are offending us by saying thank you. I said, no. I'm a guru. I'm teaching you how to have gratitude. Thank you means gratitude. Thank you means gratitude. I went four times to India. And people were upset that I'm thanking them. But I continue to thank you because I show my appreciation. Notwithstanding the guru-disciple relationship, which is absolute, I am still teaching you how to have gratitude for whatever little somebody can do. However little somebody can do, you must give that person gratitude. Then that person will feel good and will want to do more. And more. That is why I said, thank you Roj Bhai for coming for a few hours. This whole week you see Roj Bhai here. Yeah. That's because you're fighting with Babaji. I know. <laughs> This whole week you'll fight with Babiji. <laughs> Rosh is still thinking of that young Babiji. <laughs> Alright? So you come to satsang, you need to discipline yourself. Everywhere else you discipline yourself, isn't it? Everywhere else, where it is materially beneficial to you, you discipline yourself. When you go to work, you live in that discipline, isn't it? Because it is materially beneficial to you. Then you'll tell your boss, thank you. You'll tell your manager, thank you. You'll tell your co-workers, thank you. Why? Because you're earning a material benefit from it. Just like that, yeah, you're earning a spiritual benefit when you come to satsang. And don't you think, yeah, too, you should have gratitude for whatever, whatever people can do for you. Whatever and wherever people can do for you, you must have gratitude. Everyone had their turns in this satsang to be running and coordinating this satsang. Is that not so, Sarita? Did you give everyone an equal opportunity? Who did we bar from not doing anything? We gave everyone an equal opportunity <coughs> to run this satsang. Unknown people. Unknown people. Jessica is known to me. How many years do you know me, Jessica? 2008. 12 years. Only now, because there is a gap, I gave Jessica central coordinating duties. Only now, and she is a known person. But I didn't give her because of biasness, I gave her because now there is a vacancy in that position. Did I not satisfy? Yes. So Jessica is handling this entire thing. All, whatever is happening now in this satsang is handled by Jessica and a team of members that she picked up. But she is centrally coordinating. And we also involved in a lot of legal issues. And Jessica has also spent hours assisting us in our legal issues. Then she got her husband to contend with. She spent hours battling there. That's not true, Guru. <laughs> <laughs> then she got a Guru, who was a colleague, now turned Guru. Colleague, now turned Guru. So she got that dimension to contend with. Before she could just tell the Guru, you know what? Region can't do this. Because region don't have capacity to do this. She was the regional secretary. 
Now she can't say, ashram can't do this, ashram don't have capacity to. So she will have to find a way to live and do. You understand? And on top of that, she has taken on the transcribing. From working whole day, then working for a guru, then doing the guru's cases, and after that doing the guru's transcribing. Don't you think she's been a lot, uh, Jaiba? Hmm? She said no, she's shaking her head. But she, she is time strapped. She don't have the luxury of time. She don't have the luxury of time. All right? And I don't... I want flu this satsang to be fluid. I don't want any obstacles to be in any dimension of my satsang. I don't want a stone to f stop the flow of spirituality. And this is why I am discussing this and I'm also discussing it with there's nothing I have ever asked anyone to do that I have not done efficiently myself. There is nothing that I will ever ask anyone to do, Venita Bhaini, that I have not done efficiently myself. And there's the evidence there in your hand, Jessica, because you come from the Justice Department. You're holding the evidence in your hand. The Guru himself did this. And if you do transcribing with your heart, Katija, it's a piece of cake. Is it not? Do you feel any agony during your transcribing, Katija? No agony? No pain? No suffering? Why? Because it's done from the heart. You understand? All of you understand? If you do Guru's work from the heart, then the Guru himself come and do the work. The Guru himself come and do the work through your body and you'll feel nothing. You will feel nothing. What you felt last week? Bhavi? I didn't feel anything. Everyone asking why I felt tired. No tired, nothing. Why you felt no tired, Bhavi? Satish, Jessica, Bhavi? Rosh, uh, Bhabi, Senior Bhabi, I don't know where Junior Bhabi is. When she is going to come into this movie. Maybe Bhabi might kill you before that. Alright. Did anybody feel tired in that mammoth seva we did last week? Look at Bhabi's advanced stage. You understand? Uh, Jay Bhai? I'm not saying you're at advantage and you're only 21, 22. But nobody felt tired last week. The only time you feel tired is when you lost your spirituality. You lost your contact with Guru and God. That's when you feel tired. If the work that the Guru gives you, if you don't take it as a blessing, then it turns into a curse. If the work a guru gives you, if you don't take it as a blessing, then it turns into a curse. And that curse is that negativity that you feel when you cannot perform the task. All of you understand? Every one of you understand? Do you think a guru should be upgrading your nonsense all the time or your guru should just allow you to be who you are so that you can fill his hole. That is why. Guru's job is to upgrade you. When, as soon as your nonsense becomes unbearable for the guru, 
that the Guru should come here on this seat. This is where you met your Guru, isn't it? Not in the side here. Yeah? Who met the Guru in the side? First by? You met the Guru in the side. You met the Guru here. Yeah. All the stories must be here. Yeah. Alright? Every story must be here. Yeah. When the Guru gives you a duty, it is a blessing. Don't become bigger than the Guru. Don't become bigger than the Guru. That's why the Guru gives you the story in the Mahabharata and the Ramayana. Mahabharata and Ramayana. You all heard of that? The Ramayana and Mahabharata is full of blessings and cursings. You all heard people who are cursed into trees? You all heard people who are cursed into stone? You all heard people who are cursed into other beings? In Mahabharata and Ramayana, you think those stories are there to be funny stories or you think stories are there for relevance of today? Those stories are there for relevance of today. It works every day. I've got Panditji sitting in the back. He's been doing puja for how many years, Panditji? Over 40 years, you said? 48. Over 48 years. He's been doing puja. He's been going in people's houses. He's been teaching people how to live righteously through various katas. Through various katas. He's been teaching people for 48 years how to live righteously. And to live righteously is to follow your guru. Everything starts with your guru. As soon as you go against your Guru, as soon as you go against your Guru, there's hell to pay. There is, and I'm not saying this. Who is saying this? Who is saying this? Lord Shiva. Lord, Lord Shiva is saying, If I am angry, the Guru can subside my anger. If I am angry, the Guru can subside my anger. But when the Guru is angry, no one can subside him. Who is saying this? Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva is the head of the Guru system. The Guru principle, Lord Shiva is the head. Alright? So after a very long time I gave a discourse on Sri Narayan Dham itself and the discipline that must be contained by the disciples. Because it is necessary to do this. Otherwise the vehicle called Sri Narayan Dham goes astray. And we don't want this vehicle to go astray. We have a destiny. We have a mission. And we have to continue into this mission with or without anyone. You all know the story of Lord Krishna and Arjuna? You all know the story? Paribai? Venita Bene? Lord Krishna taught Arjuna on the battlefield when Arjuna went astray. When Arjuna went astray, Lord Sri Krishna taught him in front of millions of soldiers. He never take him in one bush somewhere in Kurukshetra under one tree and he told him discipline. He taught him discipline in front of millions of soldiers. And in the end, he told Arjuna, all what I have taught you, you can take it or leave it. Take it or leave it. If Arjuna left it, 
you think the battle of Kurukshetra would have still went on? Yes. Because plan B was Yudhistha. Plan B was? Yeah. Look, Arjuna was only an instrument for the Lord to be in the battle of Kurukshetra. Like all of you and myself, we are not very great. We are not very great. In fact, we are not even great. We are mere instruments. We are mere instruments in the Lord's hand. And I've shown through my seven years. This is my eighth year, I think. That no matter how many people left, that work continued. And here we are today. No matter how many people left. Sometimes it should just be three or four devotees from 200 devotees. You understand? I don't care. I don't care. Because I'm not devotee pleaser. I'm not a devotee pleaser. Those gurus that please the devotees are not bona fide gurus. They are devotees gurus. I'm not a devotees guru. I'm a guru for my guru. Swami Sudarshan Acharya Ji Maharaj. Everyone left me. Guruji is still here, Lord Sri Ramanuji is still here, Lord Sri Man Narayan is still here, 330 million devis and devotas are still here. So who you think I should back, Panditji? Which horse I must back? The horse that will never leave you, is it? Yes, yes, Panditji agreed. You understand? All of you understand? So I want to read a quotation from the Bhagavad Gita. I'm sure Panditji will be very happy that the Guru is reading from the Bhagavad Gita. And I want to read chapter 18. Chapter 18, verse 64. And Lord Sri Krishna is saying, here again my supreme word, comma, the most secret of all, semicolon, as you are exceedingly loved by me, comma, I am telling you what is good for you. Lord Sri Krishna is speaking to Arjuna. 65, focus your mind on me. Full stop. Be my devotee. Full stop. Be my worshipper. Full stop. Prostrate before me. Full stop. You should you shall come to me. Full stop. I promise you, comma, truly, semicolon, for you are dear to me. Verse 66, completely relinquishing all dharmas, comma, seek me alone for refuge, full stop. I will release you from all sins, full stop. Grieve not, colon. Verse 67, Never should this be told by you to one who is not Auster, A-U-S-T-E-R-E, comma, who is not a devotee, comma, nor to one who has no wish to listen, comma, nor certainly to him who traduces me, T-R-A, 
D U C E S traduces me. Verse 68. He who proclaims among my devotees this supreme mystery shall come to me, comma, acquiring <coughs> supreme devotion towards this, towards me, full stop. There is no doubt about this. And 70, and he who will study this dialogue of ours, which is consistent with dharma, by him I shall be worshipped through the sacrifice of knowledge. Such is my view. So the last verse he said what, Dana? Last verse he said what? I'm going to read it around Jay. Pay attention. I want an answer. Rosh Bhai, Satish. And he who will study this dialogue of ours, which is consistent with Dharma, comma, by him I shall be worshipped through the sacrifice of knowledge. Such is my view. What does that mean? When you listen to transcendental knowledge by a bona fide spiritual master, in effect, you are worshipping the Supreme Lord. When you listen to the transcendental knowledge of a bona fide spiritual master, at that point, and when you continue to remember these discourses, you are in constant worship of the Supreme Lord. All of you understand? Every one of you understand? Jai Shri Narayan.